So good to be with you all tonight. I appreciate your help, David. Thank you. We're sure grateful for you folks, for Hardin Valley Church, how you've encouraged us and welcomed us these past little over two years. But when we first started our association with you brothers and sisters, we actually, I appreciate you, thank you, caught the sermon online, was glad to find you all there, and uh, grateful we can be with you as we have been here. Um, most of you know, I think, and, and my pastors talked about it some too, we're, obviously we're physically in this area now, we're ministering in the U.S., but we're also still ministering uh, remotely as non-residential missionaries in Japan. Uh, we are working on our U.S. home and ministry base for what the Lord has for us here. But we're also uh, using the internet, and Netsco especially is involved with a lot of uh, pastoral care, Bible studies, the uh, updates she puts out uh, several a month for different folks, evangelistic ones, and also ones for Christians. Um, we're both very involved in praying for the people in Japan who we are convinced the Lord loves That's right. and wants them to know him. Amen. And he's done, just like for us, everything that it took for us to know him Amen. and for them to know him, but just for them to see and uh, come to that knowledge. The past few years have been challenging for all of us, haven't they? And there are more challenges we're all facing every day, even some of the things Brother Pastor prayed about tonight with our country, uh, the world. It appears like they're not going to be ending anytime soon, and I think really we just need to uh, figure that it's going to be like this yeah. till the Lord comes back. Yeah. Doesn't mean we're without hope. And I'm praying that tonight, even what the Lord's laid on my heart, will help us all. But I think that's definitely what we're facing. Some of our personal challenges the past few years have been leaving Japan, obviously. We had to get out of there. Some of you may know um, by June 2nd of 2020, just the way the tax system is between the U.S. and Japan. Um, then we could possibly go back after six months and one day for a new job assignment but with coronavirus. And then obviously what the Lord's called us to do here, yeah. um, we've not been able to go back physically. But besides all the moving and cleaning stuff we had to do, we weren't able to say goodbye to many people. So that was very sad and especially in Japanese culture. You open relationships, you greet people, you say goodbye. Yet we've been encouraged even in the mail, the last email and uh, regular mail, we've gotten some things even from some non-Christian Japanese people, neighbors and others we met. And that's been a real encouragement to us that they are wanting to keep the relationship going. And we're praying the Lord is working through that. We did feel the Lord leading us to this area, and we began looking for a house for our U.S. home and operation. And without going into the detail, we had some real troubles. Some of you know about that, and we experienced some great distress. Wow. At least I did. It's <laughs> Koa. Certain points, well, I guess at most points, her faith is a lot stronger than mine, I think. But what I'm presenting to you tonight, what I have felt led to, uh, lead us in studying and I pray will be a blessing to you has come out of a lot of those troubles and other troubles too that I've gone through 
So uh, praying again that it will be a blessing to you and that it will be all that the Lord wants it to be for all of us. Uh, but even with those kind of difficulties, we're very grateful. We uh, are grateful especially when we think of the people who've lost their homes, even family members, lives in the recent flooding both here, and you may not have heard it, but there's been horrible flooding in Japan too. Horrible. Again, like here, whole buildings washed away, whole families washed away. And of course, most of them not knowing the Lord. We do hope to return physically to Japan to minister. Again, we don't know when that will be or how that will look at this point. But we do know that we are here now. The Lord has us here and that it is right for us to be here at this point. Between things going on with my parents, for example, and others. And we do pray that we are being an encouragement to uh, folks here trying to follow the Lord, like you all, among others. Sure. And uh, the Lord has just been so gracious to us. Tonight, I do hope what I've been led to talk about will help all of us with the challenges each of us are facing now and will be facing in the future, too. Pray with me. I do want to offer this prayer, Lord. I want to pray. You know what's been on my heart, and even I've alluded to it. Um, I do want this lesson to be all that you want it to be for all of us. Thank you for giving me the chance, the opportunity, I should say, to study these things. I pray that what uh, we talk about will reveal more of yourself to each of us. Again, just accomplish everything you want in this, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. David was kind to uh, pass out what Andrea was kind to copy off for me, which is all the scriptures plus a few more that we're talking or pointing to tonight. So you can take that home. Of course, with the technology and things, uh, you can hear this uh, lesson again. And I pray it will be helpful for you if you feel like you want to hear it again. But these are what I've been felt, what I've felt led to pull out and draw from and I think doing things this way giving that to you will give you something to take home and you can uh, we can not take time just to read everything here although I probably will read the things we're pointing specifically to let's do start with some scripture Psalm 91 1 and 2 and then 14 through 16 he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Because He hath set His love upon me, therefore will I deliver Him. I will set Him on high, because He hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer Him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Begins with a declaration. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And then it's personal. It says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. And then we have a response from the Lord. He's saying, because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. This is directed to us. We, we, he, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. These are promises from the Lord and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Thoughts tonight I'd like us to really consider are the Lord as a dwelling place. 
the Lord is home. Living where God is. Living in the Lord's secret place. Making the Lord your home. Us making the Lord our home. Abiding with the Lord. Deuteronomy 33, 27 says, The eternal God is a dwelling place, and underneath are the everlasting arms. You know that song, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. It's a good thing to remember. And Spurgeon, in one of his sermons, talks about this dwelling place, really being an abode, really being a home. The eternal God is an abode. John 15, 4 and 5. Jesus saying, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Psalm 46, 1 and through 3. God is our refuge and our strength, very present help in trouble. I believe that's only verse 1. Forgive me. Proverbs 18, 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. But how do we make the Lord our home, our dwelling place? Let's consider that. I offer to you first, we need to know the Lord. That's right. What kind of God is the Lord? We know he's all powerful. He's everywhere all the time. That means he's surrounding each one of us even now. He's Trinity. He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he's always consistent with his word, the Bible. That's right. That's right. Never forget that. And we will not spend time tonight, but the story of how we've gotten the Bible and how it is essentially the same as what they were working with before is something really to consider. Really to consider. Colossians 1.15, I think, Brother... Blair talked about Colossians 1.14 last week. And continuing with that, talking about Christ here. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Right. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Amen. Can you begin to grasp what a gift that is and the power in that and the love in that for us and what Jesus did and what the idea behind all of that was? We know the Apostle Paul in the first chapter of his gospel wrote also, uh, what he wrote also tells us about these things. So the first point is we need to know the Lord. The second point is we need to grow in the Lord. We need to let him work in us. And we need to recognize that he is working. 
There's a classic spiritual discipline used by many Christians for many, many years now. It goes back a long time. It's called a daily examine. Typically, it's done at the close of the day. It involves getting quiet, each of us getting quiet, each of one doing it, getting quiet, examining the life we've lived through that day. It's thinking about and even writing down things we've done that we could have done better, things that didn't show God's love, that didn't reflect who he is or he, who he would want us to be. It can also help us remember things we did do in line with who the Lord is and who we say we are. And sometimes it can help us recall things we need to confess both to the Lord and to others. And there's a twist on that, something that springs from it. I think it's a very good practice, both of these I'm talking about, helpful to our growth as Christians. But the one that springs from this is another way of thinking about the day and considering where we saw the Lord working during the day. Things that he did, things we saw the Lord's presence in or work in and through. And through the quietness and reflection on those things and the listening, we often can recognize what the Lord is doing and more about who he is. Something happened to us just today. Definitely a God thing. Getting up, I got this email message. Kind of uh, seemed uh, serious, kind of urgent. Uh, it's on an email account that I didn't check last week. The friend had sent the message last week. But she wanted to give us some money. That's definitely a God thing. Definitely a God thing. Uh, are we hurting at this point? No. Praise God, we're not. But we do have projects and, of course, inflation. So much going on. I will say, you know, the funds are often on my mind. And we don't know the story of it because she has great needs herself. But she felt moved to send us a gift. I'm very grateful, and that is definitely, again, a God thing. It's something certainly I'll be considering tonight as I lay my head on the pillow and talk about it, thinking about what God. The third point I'd like to make in this lesson is that we also need to know who the Lord is not. For example, I hope that from what we read, you see, Christ is not a created being who somehow became God. He was and always has been God. From forever until forever. We say in Japanese, tokoshie kara, tokoshie made. God. Christ wasn't a created being that somehow became God. And that that teaching that Christ was created is a common heresy among so-called Christian cult groups. Christ was not a man who did something to become God, like the Mormons say. No. No, no, no. And Christ was not the Archangel Michael, That's right. as the Jehovah's Witnesses teach. That's right. No. No. Christ was not created. He is, in fact, creator. Amen. 
Please be careful of those who say the Lord is not who he is. Don't spend time with them. Don't listen to them. Don't read what they print. The Christ they talk about is a counterfeit right. Christ. And you've heard the old story. I've not been involved with working in a bank or making money. But I have been told, and I think it's very obvious, the people that know what counterfeit money is, is because they have been working and looking at and knowing the real stuff. We need also to be making sure we're working with the real stuff. We're being with the real Christ. Not wasting our time. Not going over here and there. No. No. Be careful. One of the scriptures I pulled out tonight is that Satan is like a roaring lion and he does want to devour us. We see that going on in many, many ways. So you be careful. You be careful. We need to get to know the real thing, the real, true, living God. You want to know what God looks like? Then look at Jesus. In John 10, 30, Jesus even said, I and the Father are one. And the people who heard him say that took up stones to kill him. Because they knew he was saying he was God. Jesus also clearly said, He that has seen me has seen the Father. John 14, 9. Still, the Lord is beyond our understanding. An example of this is, what, is that God is Trinity. How can the Lord be one God, but three persons? How is that possible? Well, it's sure not possible with us, but is possible with him, isn't it? Let me ask you, would you really want to believe in a God you could completely comprehend? Wouldn't that make that God less than you are? Less than we are? I would say so. Some have seen in the Trinity an example of true community. With each member of the Trinity giving preference to the others. We see that. It's something for us to consider, I believe. What is a true Christian? And how can we live out being Christians to each other? Is this idea of community uh, another reason for us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together? As we've been told. Maybe so we can learn to love and practice and find out what we need to work on. And to be encouraged too. I think maybe so, in this example from the living God. Please don't misunderstand. I'm not saying he has anything to work on. But I know I sure have rough places and things that need to be worked on. Things that don't show Jesus. Things where I maybe have even hurt some of you and where I need something like that daily exam and I talked about where I can confess and where I can even go to you and confess and ask forgiveness and I can receive, I hope, God's grace through you and certainly he offers his grace too. We need to trust this Lord we're getting to know. We're told to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. 
In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Famous, isn't it, from Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It's been good guidance for so many of us for so many years. We do need to trust in the Lord, and we do trust in the Lord. But we need to do what we should do in the face of trouble. We need to be aware of the times, and there are times we should act. We need to acknowledge the Lord, ask for his guidance, and move down the paths he provides for us. Nothing here says we need to just be like knots on a log, sitting. No. As a new friend we've made in this area says, Use the brains God and your granny gave you. <laughs> By that, she's saying we should not ignore wisdom and help the Lord sins or things it would make sense for us to be doing as we're trusting the Lord. If we're in a flood and somebody comes along with an empty space in a boat, I recommend you get in the boat. It would make sense for you to get in the boat, wouldn't it? Mightn't that kind of thing be God directing our paths? We do need to trust in the Lord, pray for guidance, and expect the Lord to direct what we should do. And that does mean listening and asking and expecting answers. And uh, part of that coming together, assembling together, we can learn so much from the wisdom from each other, from the lives with the Lord uh, from each other. And then, of course, we check that against the scriptures, and we pray about it, and we ask the Lord about it. But it may very well be good wisdom, applicable to where we are and what we need to hear. We should also pray for those in authority. 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4 says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Let me ask, are, are you praying for the world's leaders? Our leaders in the U.S.? Others? Even people that are setting themselves up as leaders? Oh, we need prayer. Not just for guidance, but repentance in many cases, and things like that. But are you praying for them so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness? And are you voting for people who will be those kinds of leaders? Etsco's been preparing for U.S. citizenship test. Um, we are still trying to figure out when would be the right time for her to submit her application with everything going on. And we would ask you to pray about that, please. It's very complicated. Having to do that before we go back to Japan probably or she will lose the time she's gathered here to account for that, many things. And we want her to be able to see her mother if possible, even though things are set up. If we can, if she can even get into the care facility, it will be like a 15-minute visit. But please pray about that. And even the guidance behind it, we want to do what is right, not just to make our life simpler, but what would be best for God. And of course, there are taxes involved 
complications on the other end. It's complicated. But one thing we see, it is such a gift for U.S. citizens to be able to vote. There are not many countries with the system we really have. Sadly, the August 4th election attracted not many voters, I understand. Wherever you were, whatever county. Loudoun County, I know, was quite low. Very low. And that is distressing especially for somebody who's lived in a place where they can't have that kind of voting, where we may not always have that privilege of voting. Doesn't say it right in the scripture, but I believe we need to vote. Be grateful for that. Some concluding thoughts. You want to know who God is? What God is like? Look to Jesus. Amen. He was not created, but he is creator. He has said in Matthew 11, 27, 29, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen, Amen isn't it? Something to say amen about. Yep. John sixteen thirty three. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He's telling us like it is. Yep. But be of good cheer. He has overcome the world. John 14, 9, clearly again he's saying, He that has seen me has seen the Father. John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And speaking of fear, 2 Timothy 1, 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and and of love, and of a sound mind. A promise in James, James 4, 8. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Amen. And a reminder again in 1 Peter, Satan's like a roaring lion, and he wants to devour us. Isaiah 41, 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Psalm 46.10 Be still and know that I am God. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established, that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. Let's remember, as we read these words and put them into our hearts from Psalm 93, it may not look like it, but the Lord reigneth. Then this promise, Isaiah 26, 3, which I am uh, working on, and I would appreciate your prayers for, to really live this. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. I want to trust the Lord more. I want my mind to be stayed on Him. 
He is faithful. He's led us through so much over the years and even now is. But I want to remember that and I want my mind to be stayed on him. And I want that for you all too.